Hi, this is Almir Oosthuizen with Cape Town Emergency Medicine. Today being assisted by Clint Hendricks, who also of Cape Town Emergency Medicine. We're going to talk briefly about examination of the wrist where you have a suspected scaphoid fracture. Scaphoid fractures are common and the mechanism of injury is usually fall in an outstretched hand. When that happens, the distal radius and the second ray of the carpus compresses the scaphoid between the two of them, causing a fracture. There are four classical examination maneuvers ranging from very sensitive but not very specific through to more specific but less sensitive. The first thing that we're going to do when you have a scaphoid fracture like this and you want to do a screening sensitive test is simple radial deviation of the wrist. This causes the scaphoid to be compressed between the second row of the carpus and the distal radius as in the injury, causing pain. Please be gentle with your patient when you do this. It's not very sensitive though because any injury in the distal radius, any other carpal bones in the radial compartment of the wrist or the base of the thumb or index finger metacarpals will cause pain. So we need something that's a little bit more specific. The second test that we will do is telescoping of the thumb. Grip the thumb like so, make it nice and stable. We are going to take the wrist and stabilize it here again and then simply telescope the thumb into the wrist. Again, we are using the distal radius and the thumb to compress the scaphoid. It's slightly more specific, but again not specific enough yet for a final diagnosis. The third and classic test that we will do is snuffbox tenderness. If you look at my snuffbox here, you'll see it's formed by the ligaments of the thumb and the distal radius of the scaphoid lying in there. The problem with just doing a finger in the snuffbox is here you have a crowding of anatomical structures distal radius, scaphoid, trapezium and trapezoid, base of the thumb metacarpal, base of the index finger metacarpal and a whole bunch of ligaments. And just pushing your finger on all of those structures is not giving you a lot of information about the scaphoid itself. To make it more specific for the scaphoid, you can do some ulnar deviation of the wrist, opening the snuff box up, and then instead of using a big thumb or finger in there, take your little finger, if you have a small index finger, and just press right on the scaphoid. This will give you much better specificity when you do this test. Finally, the most specific test for this is if you take the wrist and you look at the volar aspect of the wrist, once the wrist is in slight extension, the tubercle there, or the little bump there, that is the scaphoid tubercle. So you would take the patient's wrist, extend it slightly, and palpate on the scaphoid tubercle. You can use a little finger if you want to. This is very specific, but for distal scaphoid injuries, may not be that sensitive. And that's about it. Scaphoid injuries and the examination of the wrist, suspected scaphoid injury.